The topic that our group is interested in studying will be the gut microbiome. The gut microbiome refers to a diverse community of microorganisms which inhabit our gastrointestinal tract, primarily in the intestines. These microorganisms play a vital role in various bodily functions, including digestion, metabolism, immune system regulation, and even influencing our mood through gut, the gut-brain axis. Having a balanced gut microbiota is essential for these health benefits. One way to maintain the balance is through probiotics and prebiotics. Probiotics are life organisms intended to provide health benefits when consumed in sufficient amounts, while prebiotics are complex carbohydrates digested only by beneficial microbes in our gut. When taken together, both probiotics and prebiotics are known as symbiotics. Studies have shown that the consumption of symbiotics can enhance the consumer's health by selectively promoting the growth of commensals or by activating metabolic pathways that result in the restoration of the gut microbiota. This is due to commensals being good microbes that inhibit our gut, aiding in digestion and pathogen protection. Therefore, an increase in the diversity and the number of commensals is likely to be correlated with an improvement in gut health. These improvements in gut health extend to both the gastrointestinal and urinary tracts as well, exhibiting both anti-aging and anti-tumor properties. Through this study, we can also further investigate in the future if the increase in commensal diversity is directly correlated with any improvements in health. This is especially important as gut health goes beyond the body's ability to digest food, extending to other various health outcomes such as metabolic health, immune system robustness, mental well-being, and chronic disease prevention, which highlights the broader importance of our study. In addition, with the recent growing public interest in gut health and consumption of health foods such as probiotics that are thought to be beneficial for our health, our study could potentially contribute by adding scientific evidence on efficacy of having such dietary interventions. This includes the general Singapore population, who stand to benefit from possible health insights such as public health guidelines or dietary recommendations that we could provide through findings from our study, promoting overall wellness in the population. Additionally, our findings could also provide therapeutic applications used to treat or prevent gastrointestinal disorders such as irritable bowel syndrome, inflammatory bowel disease, and antibiotic-associated diarrhea. Since gut health is closely related with other vital systems in our body, a balanced gut microbiome contributes to a resilient and well-functioning body, emphasizing the importance of maintaining good gut health through a balanced diet, regular exercise, and potentially probiotic supplementation. Hence, these are ways that our local population could benefit from any positive findings from our experiment. Our intervention would be Vitagen LB Original, as it is one of the most affordable symbiotic options for us given our budget. It is also commonly found in supermarkets, which makes our study relevant to the Singapore population who are looking towards improving their gut health with symbiotics. The Vitagen is packed with billions of prebiotics and probiotics, specifically formulated with two strains of live probiotic cultures, Lactobacillus acidophilus and Lactobacillus paracaceae. Their prebiotic components include 7.5 grams of dietary fibers, which includes polydextrose and inulin. According to a study conducted by the National University of Malaysia, subjects with constipation predominant irritable bowel syndrome and healthy controls consume 3 bottles of Vitagen daily for 30 days. There was an improvement in their stools, such as the significant reduction of fecal pH in IBSC subjects, suggesting that there were more commensals and short chain fatty acids produced. Constipation symptoms were also improved, and subjects had shorter toilet time, less straining, and faster digestion rates. Immunity in IBSC subjects were also enhanced with reduced inflammation. Hence, the results showed an overall improvement in digestive health for both IBSC and healthy control subjects. Vitagen's previous study only focused on the clinical symptoms to indicate the efficacy of Vitagen in improving gut health. Despite no published studies of Vitagen's impact on a gut microbiome, Vitagen claims that cultured milk drink helps to replenish and increase the good bacteria in our gut. Thus, our study aims to analyze the diversity of commensals in our gut microbiome before and after Vitagen consumption and whether our findings are aligned with the claims made by Vitagen. With that, we hypothesize that the diversity of commensals in our gut will increase after the consumption of Vitagen. If an increase in diversity of gut commensals is observed, it could suggest that Vitagen claims on gut health is true and support their clinical study. And thus, our study design will be to investigate and find out how the diversity of our gut microbiome changes before and after the consumption of Vitagen. 
To do so, we carried out two rectal swabs, one before the consumption of bitergen and one after on 19 August and 2nd September respectively. Each member was to consume a bottle of vitrogen less sugar LB original at 8pm daily for 10 days straight starting from 23 August to 1st September 2024. Throughout the 10 days, every member was to carry on with their usual routine and diet. Consumption at 8 p.m. is necessary as recommended consumption time is after meals where the acidity of the stomach is low, preventing degradation of lactobacillus and ensuring maximum efficacy of vitrogen. Additionally, choosing to consume at 8 p.m. is also due to financial and lifestyle constraint, thus only being able to consume it once a day. Consumption after dinner is the most ideal as we are in school in the day and exposure of vitrogen to room temperature for long periods will deteriorate the bacterial count, making any intended effects of consumption less pronounced. The steps of a rectal swab will be first to moisten the swab with saline before bringing it to the toilet for insertion into the rectum. The swab has to then be rotated three times before being taken out, and after which, repeat the process for two more swabs to obtain sufficient microbial load. In comparison to other sampling methods, the use of a rectal swab is a much more targeted method and is simpler and more cost efficient while the samples are easier to process. Our bowel movements will also not inhibit sample collection and it is proven that the results obtained from a rectal swab is comparable to that obtained from matched fecal sample collections. No deviations were raised by the group, however possible deviations we thought of would include the swab unintentionally coming into contact with other surfaces resulting in contamination, the swab not being inserted deep enough resulting in there being insufficient sample collected, and lastly the swab could have been inserted too deep causing injury to the rectal mucosa resulting in inaccurate samples to be collected. Lastly, additional information we took note of will be our bowel frequency as well as the consistency and shape of our stool using Bristol stool scale. We will now move on to the limitations of our study. We have identified three uncontrollable factors in our study. Firstly, differences in diet and lifestyle, consumption of probiotics or supplements, and lastly, the differences in our individual microbiome. Each member has a different diet and lifestyle which could affect the composition of our microbiomes. This factor could not be controlled as some members are on a meal plan and our lifestyle, such as the frequency of exercise and sleep schedules, would differ for each individual as everyone has different commitments and schedules, making it difficult for us to try and standardize everyone's lifestyle and diet. Probiotic consumption alters the gut microbiome, inhibiting pathogen colonization and promoting a healthy gut, which regulates bowel movements. Seizing consumption could result in inhibited bowel movements such as constipation, but would provide a more accurate result of the effect of vitrogen on gut microbiome diversity. However, due to time constraints, we could not perform a washout before the intervention and proceeded with consuming probiotics instead. The gut microbiome is highly diverse and dynamic between each individual, where there is variability based on factors such as age, genetics, and health. Significance of diet. Fiber, fruits, legumes, and vegetables supports growth of bifidobacterium and lexobacilli, which produces short-chain fatty acids and promotes gut health. Consumption of fermented foods can introduce probiotics, which leads to microbiome diversity and gut health. Processed foods, refined sugars, and unhealthy fats can lead to a reduction in microbiome diversity, which can lead to dysbiosis and is linked to diabetes and obesity. An animal-based diet can promote growth of bacteriophage, which produces TMAO, and TMAO is linked to cardiovascular diseases. Significance of lifestyle. Exercise can increase gut microbial diversity and the production of short-chain fatty acids, which have anti-inflammatory effects. Poor sleep is associated with dysbiosis and reduced microbial diversity. Smoking and alcohol is associated with a reduction in beneficial bacteria and dysbiosis. Exercise can also help regulate bowel movement. Significance of probiotics consumption. Temporary colonization. Introduction of beneficial strains of bacteria can colonize the gut temporarily, which leads to an increase in overall number of beneficial microbes. Reduced pathogen load. Probiotic strains can compete with pathogenic bacteria for resources and they may help reduce the presence of undesirable microorganisms. Competitive inhibition. Probiotics help reduce the pathogen load in the gut, which indirectly supports microbial diversity. A future study could include time to do a proper washout of the participants' previous probiotic interventions and also more control of the diet, including the amount and type of protein, carbohydrates and fats consumed, 
as well as controlling the amount of exercise. We will aim to conduct a more in-depth analysis of the concentration and composition of the microbes in the gut.